exactly 10 minutes uh, i have a different take on this and i hope uh, excuse me if uh, my views are completely different from others the way i look at viagra era is that um, we had an era from the time of masters and johnsons to 1998 wherein the whole concept was that there is emotional intimacy sexual neutrality finds receptive to sexual stimuli sexual arousal arousal desire and more and physical and emotional satisfaction this went on for 40 years with no change in our approach to sexual dysfunction or principally erectile dysfunction now came the pill in 1998 when we had this excitement phase which is the euphoria if people remember a old serial even if you don't remember there was a serial where a slender shy man uh, who in that serial was called stanley blemish who at times gains superpower by taking a pill we have seen this even in tamil movies and everything blemish develops supernatural powers and gains self confidence but despite all his heroic action the nerdy character inside himself he is a nerdy character and the pill loses its effect within an hour and devish is transformed back to his original personality this we have seen in our hindi movies and tamil movies and what not in an amazing way the drug induced transformation of this serial character is reminiscent of the effect of pd5 on patients with erectile dysfunction this is what we see happening so then what happens the pill has a plateau phase because of the fact that primary and undifferentiated prescription that means giving a prescription to everybody who has an erectile dysfunction of a pd5 inhibitor should be kept in mind because 40% of these treated patients have no effect by the pd5 inhibitor given we know that pd5 inhibitor is not the euthanasia or it is not the salvation for everybody then you had the refractory phase because of this undifferentiated prescription which ignores a more serious organ involvement because we now know that most importantly ed may be a sentinel marker of cardiac disease and may precede a cardiac event by 3 to 5 years so you you are sort of in a refractory phase where you feel everything is hunky dory but there may be danger lurking in the organ so what are we discussing about pill and its powers or pill and search for answers this is the way i look at it because pill has led us to search for answers one is to believe that pill has gave us enormous power but pill has led to frequently unreflective prescription without diagnostic clarification of the underlying causes we all know that there is a reduced effect of symptomatic drug therapy over time that means the same drug may not be efficacious maybe tachyphylaxis maybe whatever it is this also prevents understanding of creeping development of an underlying morbidity which we miss because of giving the pill risk of fatal events associated because we miss this underlying disease and which is the secondary disease which we uh, we miss so now the realization is diagnosis of underlying findings of erectile dysfunction has to be trend setting aspect for therapy and should not be neglected this is the ethos of my thesis so what did the pill trigger pill triggered a tsunami of research the research was first can we increase the efficacy of the pill because we know it is not effective in 40% of patient people looked at peripheral conditions lot of research went on to testosterone and ed because we know testosterone stimulates and supports the enzyme activity of nitrogen synthase testosterone regulates enos uh, and phosphodiesterase alpha 1 adrenoceptor and also emas or the european male aging study said erectile dysfunction is the most sensitive and specific indicator of testosterone deficiency there's a lot of hype on testosterone then came the era of nutraceuticals and ed 20 most frequently used active nutraceuticals such as ginseng zinc vitamin b l arginine maca dihydroepiandestrone or a combination of products very few had randomized control trials and very few looked at the pathophysiology of erectile dysfunction one of the peripheral initiators which is commonly used nowadays which works is uh, to an extent which is 
helpful in certain situation is the arginine L-citrulline pathway because nitric oxide is one of the most important players in initiating and maintaining erection. Erection enhancing dietary supplements focus on raw material for nitric oxide production in the human body, which is your L-arginine and L-citrulline. Then came peripheral initiator, which is uh, ginseng or Panax ginseng, which is an active ingredient, uh, which is the genesoids, genesoids or ginseng saponins, which act by stimulating nitric oxide synthase and thus increasing the supply of nitric oxide. Ginseng is a common ingredient which is used in 30 odd combinations which is used for the treatment and the combination dosage varies from anywhere 10 to 150 milligram. Then came the peripheral condition era of vitamin D wherein people said vascular effect of vitamin D uh, is the induction of nitric oxide production by enos in the endothelial cell which mediates vas vas vascular dilatation. Vitamin D is capable of directly mediating testosterone activity by binding to the testosterone receptor. A meta-analysis found a very clear connection between vitamin D serum concentration and presence of erectile dysfunction. Then came peripheral conditioner curcumin. Curcumin or diferoyl uh, methane is the predominant. We all know that it's turmeric, which is the rootstock of turmeric plant and is the ingredient of the spice named curcuma. And there is a lot of evidence now supporting use of curcumin erectile dysfunction, both in animal studies because it has a long, uh, strong effect on endothelial function. Now, why was this research uh, evolving? Because we wanted to improve the efficacy of the primary drug, which was the only drug available, which was uh, Viagra, which was introduced. So people first looked at efficacy of improving the drug and trying to see whether we can benefit the 40% of patients or those patients who poor morbidities where we knew the effect of Viagra or PD-5 inhibitors were very less. So, but did the efficacy improve? Only efficacy marginally improved. Complexity and difficult problem of not being able to improve efficacy led to the discussion. Is use of drug therapy with PD-5 as universal therapeutic approach justifiable? Are we doing the right thing by giving everybody a PD-5? So, is there necessity for a strategy for identification of optimal therapy? Should it be developed at all? This was the discussion which set into motion. So, what did the pill do? The second effect of the pill is research development, wherein people said, can we identify a causative mechanism and improve efficacy? And can we use uh, the, this diagnosis in preventive health because we know ED could be a sentinel marker and ED and cardiac disease. Can we prevent the cardiac morbidity? That is where the research headed. So, why? Because the major culprit in ED we know is endothelium. We know what is an endothelium, how it plays an important role in vascular tone, coagulation, exchange of fluid, solutes, blah, blah. And endothelial dysfunction is generated when there is an imbalance in production of bioavailability of endothelium derived nitric oxide, generating a decreased vasodilator response and a pro thrombotic or a pro -endo, uh, inflammatory endothelium sensing. Now, what is an abnormal endothelium? This is where endothelial dysfunction comes into play. So, endothelium becomes dysfunctional, then it becomes abnormal, wherein transport of lipoproteins through the barrier into the subendothelial space, which plays a pivotal role of, in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis, gets impaired. This because of elevated LDL, which we know one of the characteristic marker of endothelial dysfunction or abnormal endothelium, which triggers a cascade of events of fibrosis and stenosis and whatnot and whatnot. So the pill effect led us to the diagnosis that because people were not responding to the pill, People looked at research and people deduced that there is an effect of endothelial dysfunction. That means not just the cyclic GMP pathway we are looking at, we are looking at identifying endothelial dysfunction. Unless we correct endothelial dysfunction, those 40% of patients who are not improving with the pill will have no solution, right? So that is what the pill did. Then came the effect of biochemical markers. Can, do we, how do we identify endothelial dysfunction? We know that endothelial dysfunction could be a major cause of erectile dysfunction. So people looked at biochemical markers, which are your acute phase proteins, cytokines, addition molecules, microparticles, which have been extensively studied at endothelial dysfunction, 
and inflammation markers in clinical studies. So these are the acute phase markers, these are the cytokines, these are the cell addition molecules which are extensively being studied as markers of inflammation which you can detect, that means you don't need to do studies. Then came the pill effect 4 which is the cellular biomarker research wherein people have looked at monocyte, you look like platelet lymphocyte ratio, platelet uh, uh, you know, um, uh, RBC ratios, whether monocytes which have been identified as special markers of vascular dysfunction and CAD, higher monocyte counts were associated with increased risk of cardiovascular events and peripheral endothelial dysfunction measured by peripheral arterial tonometry. And there are also other markers like asymmetric dimethyl arginine, symmetric dimethyl arginine and so on and so forth. Then came, because we now know that endothelial dysfunction could be a harbinger of an early sentinel marker of not only erectile dysfunction as well as a cascade of event of cardiac disease. Now, can we dis dis diagnose endothelial dysfunction not only by bio bio biochemical cellular, can we have diagnostic tools? And we know that for detecting a coronary disease, we had standard tools of bypass, uh, I mean, uh, what is that, uh, angiogram and calcium scoring and uh, CT angio and things of that sort, but they're all invasive. So non-invasive uh, because we needed to identify a normal endothelium from an abnormal endothelium. So can we have a non-invasive peripheral endothelial assessment? And this is where several technologies have come into picture. Now, we know that these are the various technologies where people look at pulse wave velocity augmentation, PCA change in reflective index, pulse uh, uh, peripheral arterial tone, ultrasound based FMD characteristics. So people are looking at, uh, first of all, non-invisibility, refillability, reproducibility, whether it reflects biology, whether it's reversible and whether it predicts outcome. So this is how the new technology development is coming into picture. Now comes the pill effect six, with one is to have the technology. Can I integrate this technology into clinical? Now, which are the patients who require this technology? Now we know this is, these are the standard, uh, you know, carotid artery plaque measurement, uh, carotid artery detected by MRI, calcium scoring, ankle brachialis. These are non-invasive technologies. Vascular compliance measured by radial tonometry, microvascular reactivity measured by finger tonometry, brachialis reactive activity measured by ultrasound for this high risk group of individuals because these are the people who are prone for atherosclerotic event. We know atherosclerotic event can cause endothelial dysfunction and early endothelial dysfunction presence as erectile dysfunction. So this is the pill effect six. Now one is to identify, first of all, uh, know that endothelial dysfunction is one of the primary cause for people non-responding to uh, standard cyclic GMP pathway treatment. Second is to understand how do we evaluate endothelial dysfunction, confirm endothelial dysfunction. Then came the st st strategy, if we have to do it, do we just give pill or do we repair the endothelium? Because obviously they are not responding to the pill. So now comes the new SOPR guideline where people looking at targeted repair, first is to repair the endothelium, which is glucose lowering agent, your statins and anti-inflammatory drugs, your toxilizumab, a monoclonal antibody, janipenase inhibitor, the fact in a jarulupicast therapy, which is shown to increase uh, some of these markers, IL-1, IL-6, IL-8, uh, decrease rather, and eventually decrease cardiovascular risk, and also varoxapar. So there is a lot of research beyond the PD-5 pathway domain, which is going on, which facilitates a combination targeted treatment of correcting the endothelium. So this is a targeted treatment of the endothelium. Then came non-pharmacological one is to target endothelial repair by uh, you know uh, molecules and then came the shockwave therapy where people are looking at using shockwave therapy as a non-invasive modality to induce angiogenesis stimulate cell proliferation of smooth muscle cell and endothelial cells and tissue regeneration then came one is to repair the endothelium then is to modify the endothelium. One, we know that it could be dysfunctional, it could be abnormal. So these are at the early stage, you can use these therapies where it is dysfunctional. But once it is abnormal, then you need to modify endothelium. That is where platelet-rich growth factors came into picture. So you had uh, people injecting 
all sorts of platelet rich growth factors which are supposed to be tissue regenerative angiogenic vasculogenic regenerative and these are the various growth factors which have been identified which are facilitatory for inducing reparative mechanisms in the endothelium and these are the various mechanism of action of pdgf vgf egf kgf igf and so on and so forth and so then finally came if we if the endothelium is significantly damaged if just modifying doesn't help can we regenerate it and that is where regenerating endothelium came into picture of stem cell therapy so the pill has passed a cascade of events of almost research in various areas so the cells have been derived from multiple tissues have varied potential and may function as local engrafting or paracrine signaling so you have bone marrow derived stem cells you have umbilical cord derived stem cells you have adipose derived stem cells so uh, and these are the various mechanism by which these stem cells act and so you had a cascade of it so what is my final take now we have the pre viagra era and the post viagra era now we are looking at what is post viagra era you are looking at personalized diagnosis individualized diagnosis and management what is the historical fact erectile dysfunction in the post pill era is organic in most men unless proven otherwise and this is applicable to most men over the age of 40 what was the old normal erectile dysfunction in vast majority of men is typically treated with non cause specific treatment that you don't need to investigate you have a grading scale you have an iaf score you have premature ejaculation take this medicine you have organic cause i mean you have i will put you on psychotherapy i'll put you on this and you this this must change because this is a primitive concept as far as i am concerned i may be making radical statements excuse me for that what is the new normal define the pathogenesis we have to define whether it's vascular neuronal whether it's central or peripheral whether visual or tactile understand their molecular physiology treatment should be based on the pathophysiology of erectile dysfunction a detailed investigation of the causation and also evaluate coexistent cardiac morbidity so my final take home is viagra has changed erectile dysfunction management you had an era of psychological management this was the first directed treatment of a cyclic gmp pathway which was introduced in 1997 or 1998 which improved efficacy of treatment and a directed treatment and then came the era of improving the efficacy of treatment because we realized that post this 40% of patients do not respond then people looked at comorbidity management as a better management strategy first and then said lifestyle management then people looked at pathogenesis because these two alone did not help many men respond so people looked at pathogenesis identified endothelial dysfunction as a causative new technology development then now comes the personalized management now we are in an era of endothelial modification and endothelial regeneration so it has been a total revolution in fundamental research in 25 years in the post viagra era a pill has given a man a chance to delay ed or reverse ed by triggering fundamental research and technology development thank you very much for your patience